the, the most decisive, uh, some of the mo most decisive outcomes have been uh, the fact that we are uh, talking about transformation towards renewable energy and that we are talking about countries and regions in this particular report. So it's not just a general report. Uh, and that we are, you know, we had a lot of debate about this, that we are not saying that uh, fossil fuel or coal is enemy number one, but that renewables will become the transformative change that will happen faster than what we think will happen and that we should anticipate and know how to respond to it and not be in that old model uh, world anymore. Uh, and that this is driven by technology, by reducing of uh, reduction of cost, by people's demand, uh, by climate change, uh, and that all these factors will lead to the change that will happen. Uh, but I also think that what I found uh, most compelling, uh, because in my country we will have a very difficult challenge to make that uh, a, a complete tr a transformation, uh, is that it's not just about the cost and, uh, of, of the uh, uh, technologies now, but the cost of the technologies that will come down in the future, and that the business case, I think that's what I found the most compelling. I think if you were trying to convince the government as well as the private sector, which, as we know, have vested interest in making sure the policies do not change too drastically, then you have to make the business case, the economic case, and the fact that a renewable energy is not just about the climate change issue. It's also creating new uh, uh, opportunities for business, for development, uh, and for competitiveness, sources of competitiveness. The biggest challenge is obviously the old model. Uh, while uh, fossil fuels such as fuel have become a, a changing game, you still have coal. Uh, and in a country like mine, uh, we have made the transition away from uh, fuel just because we have become a, a net oil exporter. But on coal, because we are producing coal, it's still the lowest priced source of energy. And, and it's still, even in the planning, still going to be uh, where we are transitioning to, even though we have renewables also uh, as, as a new source of energy. So I think overcoming uh, and making sure that you, you price coal uh, uh, as a source of energy, in, in, you know, in terms of the exter externalities, as well as the carbon pricing and so on, needs to happen, but it cannot just happen based on that because we know that it's still the lowest cost at the moment. Yeah? But I think the problem with something like coal or even uh, fuel is that what we call stranded assets. Once you invest now, you're locked in for another 10 years, right? And there's a cost if you're going to be uh, transforming to renewables. So I think we have to be cognizant of how to manage that. So there's an opportunity. I think I would write, like to emphasize the opportunity that if you invest now, uh, in, in the next two or three years in more renewable, more sustainable, even if you had to invest in coal, you'd have to make sure that it's the most cleanest coal uh, technology uh, uh, in the future because you're going to pay for the cost five, ten years down the road if you don't invest now. You know, so we have to outline the costs uh, that it, you can incur if you don't invest now. And there's actually a big opportunity to invest now to have a higher and more sustainable growth trajectory in the future.